Hello, let me try again. So, ano yasa yo? Oh, yeah, that's the only Korean that I know. Sorry, I have to go back to English. Uh, so, my name is uh, Joe Fai Chow. Uh, why is it not doing this film? Okay, this is the first line. So, you can see my name is uh, Joe Fai. Uh, but I studied and I worked in UK for a long time. Some of my fans, the British fans, uh, they don't, can't remember my name, the full name in Chinese. So, I call myself Joe. So it's easier for them to remember my name, but you know I'm from Hong Kong now. Uh, I work for a company called H2O.AI. So how many of you have heard about this company before? Uh, just a few of you? Okay, that's good, because I'm here today to tell you about this company and the software that we produce uh, for automatic machine learning for the enterprise. Uh, so when I first joined H2O three years ago, I was a data scientist. I'm still a data scientist, but uh, because uh, when you work for a startup, you have to move on to uh, different positions from time to time to do different jobs, uh, uh, f to fulfill different roles at different times. So nowadays I'm a data science evangelist, meaning that I travel different places to talk about H2O so people can find out more about H2O uh, from me. So that's why I'm here today. Uh, if you want to reach out to me after this event, so my email address is very easy to remember. It's just joe at h2o.ai, joe at h2o.ai. So if you want to reach out to me, so please email me. So you can also see I have a Twitter handle if you use Twitter. So you can see I, I used to use MATLAB a lot when I study in universities. So I call myself Manapolis. But I'm now back to open source and uh, h2o. Just a little bit about myself. Uh, I told you about my many roles at HTO as a sales engineer, solution architect, uh, data scientist, and uh, customer support. But I also uh, now famous <laughs> for, for one thing. They call me the physics savvy guy because um, I travel a lot to different places for conference and meetup, and I always bring my 360 uh, camera with me. So this is not the uh, device from the movie Man in Back. So when I press the button, I won't erase your memory. So you'll be safe to go home. So I just, I just want to do, take a photo with you all if you're happy with it. Uh, is that okay with everyone? Is it okay? Yeah. If not, you can just you know, just duck and then hide from the photo. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Back to the main topic today. So I'd like to, first of all, give you a quick uh, introduction to the company called H2O.AI. So this is a, a software company, a technology company uh, based in Silicon Valley. So the headquarters is in California. Uh, but we do have office now in uh, New York, in Prague, in Singapore, uh, and then one in India. So the company was found back in 2012, so we have been in the market for about seven years now. Uh, we focus on machine learning software, so you know, both of our software, both open source H2O and the commercial Java's AI, uh, for a machine learning platform that we want to uh, improve from day to day uh, on day to day basis, so make sure that people can use it um, to, tr to create some models from the data quite easily. So you can also notice that we have funding from one of them, from uh, one of the investor is Nvidia. So we work closely with them, Nvidia, of course, with IBM, just to make sure that we can leverage the GPU accelerations from the latest hardware. Okay. So this is a quick slide about the products that we have at H2O. So of course, we uh, seven years ago we start from the left hand side, the H2O uh, machine learning platform. So all the Product you see with the light background, with the white background, uh, open source products. So you can download it from our web page. You can see our all the code on GitHub. Uh, so what we want to do is to make it easier to um, for everyone to get into data science. So although uh, there are some features that are not available in the open source H2O, that will be enough uh, for many different data scientists to, uh, to work on the data as in a scalable fashion. So for example, when you start with H2O, so that's our, the main platform for machine learning, and then if you integrate that, so if you want to use Spark for data management, and then you want to use the same machines for machine learning, you can use Sparkling Water, our product that is our integrations uh, with Spark, uh, to do the machine learning with Spark. 
Uh, later on, because we also work with NVIDIA a lot now, so we want to optimize the algorithm. So from the CPU-based H2O, we want to put them, those algorithms into, uh, into GPU uh, environment. So that's why you have the H2O for GPU uh, uh, package now, also available on GitHub and our website. So this, uh, this product, uh, we don't uh, sell them. They're all open source software but we do provide enterprise support to, to customers, and that's how we make money from the open source software. Um, we've been learning a lot from our customers over the last seven years, and that's why we uh, got to a point that we have to cr uh, create a new piece of software uh, called Java's AI, and that's because we, we noticed there are some features that uh, the, the market really needs, the customers really need uh, from an uh, automatic machine learning platform, meaning uh, their automatic feature engineering, their visualizations, their explainable uh, result, and uh, the pipeline that you can use to deploy the model. So all these things that we want to do uh, with Java's AI, which is the topic of um, this talk. So just a few more slides about uh, H2O. So uh, this is uh, one of the slides for marketing. So we see that we are uh, uh, one of the leaders in the machine learning industry. So we have been uh, uh, reported or recognized as a leader in different, uh, from different organizations. So most importantly, because uh, we we are going start we started from US, so it's more popular in the United States at the moment. But one of my job when I start uh, working with HDO is to uh, bring HDO to other parts of the world. So I work very hard for the last few years to expand the market in Europe. So we are got to the point in time now we are ready to expand to Asia, and that's why I'm here today to talk about HDO. So thanks for having me again. Uh, so there are many companies already using H2O, so they may not be our customers because we have open source software, but they are using H2O you know, in, in productions already. And we also are keen to, um, to do meetup or some events that we uh, want to uh, promote H2O or just to ask people from uh, the communities to share their ideas with us. So we don't only talk about H2O at our event, so we have the meetup and conference, which we invite people, the experts in the industry and the other communities to come and just share uh, the experience with, with us. Uh, you can also see our customers, some of the customers on, on this list here. So uh, H2O is a very generic platform. It, if you can frame your problem for machine learning, you can use H2O for, for it. So we have uh, customers from the financial sector and then for the retail, uh, telecommunications, and other sectors. So there are, uh, uh, there are many ways that you can use H2O uh, uh, nowadays for different use cases. I think by the time uh, at this point, you know that I cannot speak Korean, so uh, I need to, uh, we need to let leverage some local partners uh, to help us grow uh, the market here. So uh, you can see the Azure Soda is one of our main partners here in Korea, and also have IBM uh, for, for the IBM Power side. So there, there will be another talk about how uh, IBM Power uh, with Java's AI can, can bring uh, business value to you uh, after this talk. IBM and Agile Soda will be our main partners in, uh, in South Korea. So if you want to um, mainly want to get a contact or get some help, some support uh, with actual products, they will be the first uh, people that I would suggest you to go to. And of course, I will come back to help if needed, but I cannot speak Korean, unfortunately. Uh, but they are the local partners for you. OK, so let's go back to more technical size. Uh, what are the challenges in the nowadays machine learning uh, workflow, and how do we propose some solutions to solve some of the pain points in, uh, in those challenges? So let's go through a very simple diagram uh, about how we see uh, machine learning uh, is done today. Um, so this is uh, what we call a very really iterative process because uh, you start from the data, you need to import the data in the system, you want to uh, create some features. Sometimes you want to create features maybe from the date uh, information. So you want to create whether it's a holiday, what's the weekday, what's the month of the, the date. So you want to create more features in order to create uh, good machine learning models. But that could sometimes take, uh, take some experience and some trial and errors to get it right. So maybe sometimes you make a mistake, you have to go back to the data again, uh, and so on. And once you have the features, you also want to try uh, different algorithms. For example, you may have random forest, support vector machines, neural networks, and so many different algorithms that are available today uh, to, to, to train supervised learning model. 
but you don't know which one are the best. So sometimes you have to try again, and you have tried many different things, try different settings, try different parameters in those models in order to, to get it right. So once you have the final model that you, you like it, you want to deploy it as well. So that becomes another problem because you want to make sure that model is actually deployable uh, for real applications. So you, because we're human, we, we do make mistakes. So if, if you make mistakes at different stages, you may, you're likely to try it again, uh, uh, again and again in an iterative manner. And that's why we see this, the whole machine learning workflow as an iterative process because you're gonna uh, try a thing, few things uh, more than one time. But how do we uh, help with this? So we want to um, break it down into some uh, simple components in this workflow. For example, if we break it down into, um, first of all, the data ingestion, so, so we have different data source. This could be data from uh, on sitting on different tables in a database, could be on Hadoop, could be on Spark. Um, that the first thing that you want to do is to integrate them, to merge the tables, to create the first table for machine learning. So you have some features and then the target for supervised learning. Uh, after that, you, you may want to actually create more features. We want to create, based on the raw features, you want to create more powerful features uh, you know, to make a better model. Uh, that also takes time because after, after each time you create more features, you will want to tune your models. So for different algorithms, you want to tune the model again to make the best use of the new features. So all these are really iterative process. So you try, try again and again, and you may never get it right in the first time. Because even though you are an expert, you are do, you've been doing data science for so many years, when you have a new data set, you will not know the best settings for that data set you know, in just a pure guess. So after all this, what we want to do with Java's AI is to simplify the workflow in the second half. So we don't have tools to help the users to integrate different tables from different data source because there are just too many ways that you can do the data integrations at a step. But what we ask for the user to do is to create the first table, the first table with some basic features and a target that we can use it for supervised learning. And once we have that, we can use Java's AI, the software platform here, to automate the rest of the pipeline. So from feature engineering, we were going to use uh, some recipe from the Cargo Grandmasters to uh, transform the features into more powerful features for machine learning. And then we are, uh, at the same time, we try to tune the model as well. We tune different algorithm to capture the best from the new features. And once we have done that, we have to create the final model, which is, could be an ensemble of multiple models stick together. And we can just also uh, export the model as a pipeline that the, so the next team uh, for the deployment, they can just take the result of this one as a pipeline and then create the applications. Okay, so this is the, like the, the overview of the software. So I'm going to go through some key features, or actually the key steps of how it actually works in the software. So unfortunately, I don't have my laptop with me, uh, so I, t I can't do a live demo, so I'm going to go through just the steps. But if you're interested to see, uh, in seeing a live demo, I'll be around in this conference, so you can just grab me and I ask Joe, please show me a live demo. So I'll be here. Okay. So let me break it down to uh, different steps in this process. So the first one is quite obviously we want to ingest the data. So uh, because we're trying to work with other, many, many more partners to make it easier for different people with different uh, data sitting on different infrastructure to ingest the data into Java's AI. So we're trying to uh, uh, work with partners to increase the list of connectors uh, in this list. So we have more, uh, in the future we will have more and more connectors for different databases or different data sources. But you can see that we support, of course, the Hadoop, the normal SQL, local file, and then for partners, we have, as you can see, the Snowflake, and then we also have Blue Data, not on this list, Blue Data. So there are different platforms that you know, most of you may be using uh, uh, them to, use, to store your data already. So we just want to make it easier to connect that to your data source so you can get the first table. So the next step is really like a, something uh, additional value that we add to this data analysis. Because uh, sometimes before you do machine learning, you want to do some, what we call the EDA, the uh, exploratory data analysis. So we want to actually look at the data itself before you do any machine learning. So this is the step to uh, help with that uh, process. Um, and we try to create some graphs, so we try to create some automatic visualizations for the users. But these are not just any uh, normal graph. So I would like to ask if any of you have been using uh, ggplot2 in R. 
Anyone use uh, ggpod2 the package now? Or maybe equivalent in Python? So uh, how many of you know Professor Leland Wilkinson from the photo? No? So, but I can tell you this is, uh, so Professor Leland Wilkinson has been the, the, the legend that we professors in this field. So he wrote a book called The Grammar of Graphic, and that became the foundations of many visualization package uh, in the world right now. And he's still working at uh, right now, so he's 70 years old now, but he works at H2O because he just loves uh, making software. And so we're trying to capture all many years of his uh, experience into creating the best graph uh, coming up from data automatically uh, for the users. So for example, when you ingest the data, you don't have to uh, make any command to Java's AI. It will just detect the most interesting patterns in the data and just create the most relevant uh, graph for the users to see. So we won't uh, 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 like create all the possibility of the graph, but we just create the most interesting graph that user may want to see it before the machine learning step. For example, you can see here this is a graph for the outliers. So sometimes you may want to look at the outliers before you, you know, uh, create a final data set for machine learning. Okay. So the next step after visualization, so after you have a look at the data, uh, this is the next step that you want to actually train the model. So this step has two main tasks. The first one is to create new features. So these are the features that uh, I'll explain that is coming from the, some of the best data scientists in the world and how they did it in the past. We just try to capture the knowledge in the past and change them into a piece of software that can create the features automatically. Um, at the same time, we also want to tune the model so we can, uh, so we, once you have the new features, we can also tune the model automatically. So these are now connected, so it's an iterative process. So you, you may not get it right at the first time, and that's why we create this platform so it will automatically try, try again uh, in a really, really timely fashion. So first of all, uh, for the feature engineering, uh, how many of you have heard of Cargo? Cargo are data mining competitions. Platform, okay, but you have to believe me now. So this is a uh, really, uh, really tough competitions uh, for data scientists around the world to to you know, fight against each other. Uh, we have some of the best of the best in the world. So we have the former number one. Uh, so the, the one with uh, in the middle, uh, Mario's. He is a former number one uh, cargo uh, data scientist. Um, so and then we have another ex cargo grandmaster. We call them the, the cargo grandmaster because they're the best of the best. So they're working at x and what we want to do uh, with them is to translate the knowledge in the past. So how do they transfer, transform some features uh, into new features, and how did that work uh, for them in the past? We want to capture that knowledge into this software platform. So the people, so, so our users, they may not need to learn that many, uh, they don't have to fight through that many years of cargo, and they will get the benefits of the, the recipe from the cargo master from the software. And these are really important because we, uh, based on experience in the last seven years, you know, automatic machine learning is in two parts. The first one is feature engineering, and the second part is tuning. If you just focus on tuning the model, you, may, you can only get to a certain level of accuracy or performance. If, if, if you have feature engineering uh, uh, combined with auto-tuning, that will give you another level of accuracy or in, in terms of gain in performance. So that's why we combine both together in this framework to make it valuable uh, you know, uh, for the users to get to the best of the data set uh, in a short time. So you may ask what is you know, behind the scenes in, in this software? So we actually use a lot of open source software, uh, including our own. So we have the HDO machine learning algorithm in here. We, we use uh, two very famous uh, gradient boosting machine package called uh, LightGBM from Microsoft. And then HGBoost is also another popular package for uh, gradient boosting machines. So we use the GPU version of that to accelerate the process because every time you, you create new features, you want to train a, a, a model to test the performance of the course validations. So we want to make it fast, so we want to use GPU to accelerate that process. And that's why we, so the, all the algorithm that you can see here, or tools here, they are optimized for that purposes, for data merging and the machine learning uh, process. So does it really work? So uh, it's hard to tell with, without 
trying this software on all the use cases in the world. But we use, again, we use Cargo as a benchmark platform, so we can see how, how does it uh, compare with the Cargo Grandmasters working on the Kubernetes solution in the past. So for example, um, this BMP uh, uh, competitions in the past, so some of our team, some of our Cargo Grandmasters in our team, they spend two or three months to get to top 10 positions in the competitions in the past. But with the software, or this is uh, this was done uh, experiments done on a DigiX box one. So with a really powerful machines with uh, Java's AI, it could achieve similar kind of accuracy or performance in a few hours. So that is the main um, the main benefit of using this software. So you don't have to ask the team of you know, the best data scientists to work on that problem for a few months. You can just use the software, give it a few hours to one, and you get to a really good, like, well-cast level performance in a few hours. And you don't have to wait that long to get to the answer. So at the same time, you can uh, use the time to really ask the questions for the business, or what kind of business question you want to solve, and what are the, the best data sets that you want to collect uh, to, to solve this problem. So instead of asking the data scientists to tune the model or to create the features, they can better spend the time to, to look at uh, the step before and after machine learning. Okay. So that is not a, that's not only about machine learning. So we, only, we also care about uh, what, what you do after you have the, the best model. So if once, for example, say you have the, a really good model from the previous step, which is feature engineering and tuning the model. So what do we do next? We want to deploy the model because we need that to create the real applications uh, uh, in order to make some decisions uh, for the stakeholder. So we, 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 could, we capture all this, uh, both the feature engineering and the, the, and the model from, this, uh, from a training exercise into a scoring pipeline. So at this point, you don't need the powerful machines anymore. You can just take this pipeline, put it into maybe my laptop, maybe some no air machines for scoring. So this is very useful because the team, sometimes this, uh, the process are separated by different teams. So maybe the first team doing the data managing and the second team doing the feature engineering and then the, the model training. And that would be the third team doing the deployment. Sometimes they may use different tools. Sometimes they may use, some of them they may use uh, SQL, SQL for data managing or Spark. And then some of them they may use R or Python for data science or the feature engineering and the model tuning. And the, the deployment team usually they, they may use Java or C++ or other languages to deploy. So their tools sometimes work, don't work with each other. So they may have problems to replicate the results from the previous team and to make it into productions. So this is uh, thinking of, of HDO to streamline the whole thing here to create a software with uh, this platform so we can have a pipeline in Java or C++ um, to hand over to the team that is in charge of deployment to make it easier for them to deploy the model. And lastly, because we also talk about, we touch on uh, explainable AI in, in the morning, so that is also a, a really important part in the software Java's AI. Because we don't want to just give uh, a scoring engine to the engineer so they can just make some predictions. We also want to provide uh, to them some tools to explain the results so they can actually explain the results to uh, maybe the stakeholder or the other decision makers or even customers. Because it's hard to, um, to gain the trust because all this model coming out from the experiments, they're really complex. They could be ensemble of multiple models together. It's really hard to explain to uh, uh, the, just the performance of machine learning model to anyone. However, if you change the storyline a bit to kind of explain to them how different features, how different features from the data set, from the input, contribute to the final prediction. So maybe the age, maybe the, uh, uh, the income of the customers, the education level of the customers, the address, et cetera. So how different informations from the customers contribute to the final, maybe a risk score, maybe a risk score for credit card loan. So if you can relate that back to the, something that you can explain to uh, other uh, 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 users or uh, just to human, they will, they will give you more trust. They will, they will trust you uh, a bit more on using those results from a back box model. And that's why we provide different information, different tools in Java's AI. So for example, we have LIME, which is the local uh, interpretable uh, model agnostic explanation framework that you know, using some linear model to explain a complex model in a local fashion. 
And then we have a surrogate model, so we try to match the predictions back to the, uh, uh, the raw features. And we also have a table, like what we call the reason cook, so we try to match the quantity of different feature value to the impact on, on, the, uh, on the predictions. For example, you may say that uh, if you have a, a payment delayed uh, for two months in the last payment, then there will be an increase of the risk score by no point something uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, predictions changes. So this will give you some information to, uh, to inform the, the uh, people who, who are questioning the, uh, the predictions from the model. So you don't, you're not just giving them the model and the outcome, you can actually tell them how the model make the decisions based on the input of the customers. Okay. So as I said, this is not uh, a live demo. You feel free to just grab me and I will show you a live demo. But if you want to try this software on your own, you can just do that. You can just go to our website, uh, .ai. there is a, a button on the right, uh, right corner, top right corner. And if you're in the form, and then you get a free license uh, for Java's AI for 21 days. So the, the thinking of this is that we want to make it uh, comfortable for you guys to try it on your software, on your, on your hardware, so it can be uh, on-premise, uh, with your, your own laptop, could be on the cloud. Uh, but this is flexible. This 21 days is also flexible. So if you need more time, we can also you know, give you more time to, to test it until you think that you, you are you know, happy with you know, whatever you see from the software. So this is now something that you can try uh, after this event. So again, the address is here. So it's www.xto.ai forward slash and then try hyphen Java's hyphen AI. And that's the thing that you, yeah, that's the address that you can get the license key. So once again, thank you for, for having me. Uh, this is my second visit to, uh, to South Korea. The last time I was only five years old, so I, I, I didn't remember much. But this time I, I do remember all more faces now. So I thank you for having me again.